All right, hello everyone, my name's Henry and welcome to another video. So today, last week, we did Adobe Story, pretty exciting stuff, uh, kind of delayed a few other videos, and this is the first video I'll be doing, this is the first add-on showcase of 2017! Get excited! So today we're taking a look at the S Blended extension for Photoshop. This is actually one of the more exciting ones, uh, we're starting off the year great uh, this time around, I have a couple more extension showcases coming in the next few weeks. Um, so there's all the reason to be excited. I hope, I, I believe 2017 will be a great year for extensions. Or, you know, I've already skipped January. We were already at February. Um, so, you know, good on me, I guess. I took a bit longer of a vacation than I expected. Although I did push out three videos in a row right before I left for vacation. So in some sense, I guess I'm excused. So what are we gonna be looking at? The extension we're going to be looking at for today is, of course, for Photoshop. Um, it's, I'm in CC 2017. I believe it works in 2015 as well. I'm not sure. Uh, and that is as blended. So let's go ahead and open up as blended here. Um, and I've already done. There we go. That's how it's supposed to look. So as blended, as the title suggests, is all about making better, you know, gradients. Okay, the title doesn't directly suggest it, but you know, you can kind of guess your way to it. So it's you know, kind of the metaphorical of a blender. You blend together colors to create cool looking things like, like gradients, you know, the typical gradient tool, you know, close that, choose, um, say we do this and then you pull it over, boom, you've got a gradient. Now what as blended does, which is really cool, is it makes way more complicated, um, what should I say, blends or gradients uh, than what Photoshop can do on its own. Again, why you want extensions, right, to do stuff Photoshop doesn't do on its own or improve upon what Photoshop already does. So first of all, uh, you might have noticed how it deactivated itself. Uh, if you press that little switch up in the corner, it almost looks like a torch when it's on or when it's up. Um, and you'll deactivate it so that you can't, um, so you're not unintentionally clicking it. And then if you click it once, it'll automatically re-enable itself. And if you click there, it'll deactivate. So just kind of useful, more extensions that do similar things should have that just so you don't unintentionally click stuff and then screw up your gradients and stuff so as blended um so for one thing we've got this so if we get in the corner here we can see we have this drop down where you can choose between different uh already presets these are not something i made they were there when i got the extension and aurora berry blue sunrise these are just some examples you can use um just to sort of document showcase how the extension works. Um, you'll notice the plus sign, we can make our own. So I'll get to that. Um, so actually, no, let's, let's make our own. So let's press the plus button. And then let's press the randomizer. So that'll make a random one. We can also, as you can notice, it just, now it's got the gradients on the side. So if we go ahead and press this really, like the, the rotate button, you'll notice it rotates it. And then we can once again, randomize it and we'll get it sort of juicy. It'll, you'll notice it uses so a normal gradient would have, you know, a lot less sort of color difference. You just have sort of like a line to choose here. It's got an entire color map and you'll notice here, I can move these. So I can move this one down here. I notice that we'll get a much more majority of this majority. And then we can move this up and we'll get a much more fair majority. So we can move these different pixels down. We can also add new ones. I did not mean to right click. Yeah, there we go. We can add more. So I can press here and we'll add another color and then I can press here and it'll add another color and you can just add more and more sort of color variety to your blends. Uh, that's what I'm going to refer to in the math there because, you know, we've got to separate these things from gradients. So why not call them blends? So, so now I've made a pretty bad gradient because it's just so many of the same colors. So what I want to do then, of course, is of course I want to get a better color. So you'll notice we have this basic color down here, which if we right click that little square, you'll get uh, the color picker. The normal Photoshop color picker. However, if interested, you can also use the integrated color picker right here by simply pressing that, or I believe, no, okay, <laughs> by just pressing that up arrow, right, we're also familiar with, and you can choose a different color. So let's, you know, let's add in like that kind of, and then here we'll do sort of like a really weird as, like kind of weird blue, and a little bit of dark, you know, just vary it up. You can just change these as much as you want. If you're not happy, you can randomize it. So now it's made me a completely different, like, it's useful just for this, in my opinion, this randomizing thing, because you can make, 
really cool. Like, if you're making something and you're just like, you know what, I want a gradient, but I'm not sure what gradient. Let's experiment, and then you can just generate these vivid, really nice-looking gradients for your project. It's really cool, and it gives you a lot more control over your gradients in a much better interface than the normal gradient tool, uh, tools interface. Now, okay, so let's let's say we do this one, right? So we'll enter the name field here and we'll call it my cool new blend. I can't spell. Yo, it's a lot of that. And then we'll, um, um, yeah, I'll get back to that in a second. So then we can go ahead and go into the menu right here and we'll give plus plus. And now you'll notice that my cool new Blendio is now showing up on the menu. I also just noticed this one's here. So the thing, if you press this little three dot thing here, you can remove blends that you do not want. So, you know, if you want to make a new one, simply press this. So you make a new one or, and then you name it like, I'm going to call this one fish. And then you're going to randomize it one more time, rotate it and randomize it. So you'll notice it randomizes whether or not it should have it rotated or not, which will of course vary the result, whether or not you want it to be on this side or if you want it to be on, yeah, like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and rotate, I'm gonna go ahead and randomize this a little bit more until I get a result I'm happy with. I also want it to be like this. So let's see here. Yeah, that's a good one. I like this one. So we'll call this, this is fish. And if we look here now, you'll notice we've got fish and my cool new blend. And that's the other thing, the list of blends will automatically categorize it from the last one you use. So coral, which is at the bottom, if I change to that now, and then I enter the menu again, you'll notice the coral is on the top and then fish is second, which was the one we were on before. So the menu or the list of your blends will automatically sort itself depending on which one you used last. So that, you know, if you've been using one a lot, it'll always be at the top and the ones you use the least will be at the bottom. So it's actually really useful in that aspect. Uh, there's two buttons here you might have also noticed. So the first one uh, allows you to disable the actual color chooser. So you just get a clean look at your gradient. Uh, so where you like when you're kind of done modifying it, you can sort of enter this preview mode to see, ah, oh, that's how the gradient looks. And then this button does, yeah. So uh, the thing that I'm gonna do now, so we've got this gradient. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the gradient tool and oh, hang on, it's not always there. I select the gradient tool. And you notice as soon as I use the gradient tool, oh God, I did that badly. So the thing this thing does is it overrides whatever gradient you've set as long as you have the panel open. So I'll go ahead and drag this over like this. And I did a terrible job of that. Let's do it like this instead. And there we have it. So you'll notice it just turned the gradient we had in here into an actual gradient. So you notice that's a beautifully vivid background. Like if you kind of look at it, that could actually be an image of like green grass with a blue sky. And then you've just blurred it really heavily. It could look like that, but it's actually just a completely gen like computer generated gradient, which is really cool. So we could do that. We could like, you know, you could experiment a bit with like how you want to do it. You can also, so you can see here, if I draw straight lines, it'll make like actual stripes. While if I drag it from one corner to the other, uh, like this, it'll make it work properly. So if I go ahead and do this, for example, so. Great timing for low power, power mode. Um, you know, so, so you, you know, it just, um, in general, one, a really cool plugin or extension, if you ask me. You know, this, you know, I've, I'm always a fan of extensions that make things easier. Like, I took a look at Color Lifter uh, about three months ago, Color Lifter right here, which, you know, it allows you to get easy color patterns. Like, imagine, you know, okay, so. Um, yeah, so I, yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, color Lifter, you know, a good example. S Splendid. Reminds me of that. Allows you to make awesome gradients from you know a lot more controlled um ah gradients um as well i just want to mention this um there is currently 
Um, there also had the, there's also a uh, iPhone app that you can download for uh, Splendid that uses the Creative Cloud libraries and a few other similar Adobe products to integrate really nicely. So you can actually look for and sort of all sorts of stuff with uh, Splendid. So if you have an iOS device like an iPad or an iPhone, I'd recommend you to download that app along with the extension. Um, I personally don't actually have an iPhone. I have an Android. Uh, hopefully they'll make an Android app soon or, you know, I, at least I hope so. Um, and um, I do have an iPad though, so I might download it on that. I'm not sure. Um, what, uh, as well as that, um, if you're interested in trying this out yourself, because it does cost money, it's, um, uh, I can't remember, I believe it's $20. If not, you'll find the download links in the script or the purchase links in the description, so don't you worry. Um, but if you want to try this extension before you buy it, then at the time of this recording, there's currently a trial version available on Adobe Exchange. There'll be a separate link to the trial slash demo version uh, that you guys can check out if you're interested in just trying the extension before you buy it. Definitely something more extension makers need to do. It was actually one of the reasons I made this channel. There was just so little information on the extensions and, you know, there was no, no one actually going around there and actually properly reviewing them. So I started doing this. So seeing it, extensions actually trying to make demo and trials available is a brilliant step in the right direction. So um, I believe that covers as blended. Uh, one thing I do want to note, which I've talked to the creator of the extension about, uh, I, I mentioned to him the idea of sharing, um, like sharing the um, your gradients with uh, other users. Like if you like say you ex export a file and then you can send it to others and they can use the same gradient. Um, or the same blend and he responded to me that that is something they have planned so hopefully in the near future and if some time with another update we might actually see that as a thing and as well as that at some point and this is way more ahead in the future they're planning something similar to adobe cooler or as it's now referred to as adobe color um, which i do believe i have here yes adobe color themes which of course is the awesome website made by Adobe that allows you to make color themes um, using this. Yeah, the analogous and all that. So, and that allows you to share them to libraries because you explore and then we can find everyone else's themes and you can also make your own ones and then you can, you know, um, and then you can share them. So that is apparently the plan they have for a splendid, exciting idea. I love the concept of being able to share and grab from an open community of a lot of creative stuff and I think it's really going to be helpful for the extension and I assume that compatibility would also transfer over to the S Blended app that I mentioned previously. So with all that said, uh, I'd really recommend you guys to check this one out. It's one of the cooler ones, uh, one of the cooler Photoshop extensions I've had to, uh, gotten to look at recently and as I said, there will be more extension showcases coming up uh, in the next few days slash weeks so make sure to stay subscribed for that. So with all that said, thank you guys for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to subscribe, like the video, comment, favorite, whatever. Or no one favorites videos anymore, but, you know, do all the normal stuff. And, uh, you know, just in general, just give me feedback on what you thought. And uh, if you have any questions, I'm sure the uh, creator of the extension will be somewhat at least paying attention to the comments. So do tell down in the comments and I'll, and they'll hopefully see it. If not, I'll give the information directly to them. Because feedback is always important. So yeah, thank you for watching. And I'll see you in the next video I make.